you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. The CEOs, authors, thought leaders, visionaries, and motivators. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Hi, this is Voss now, here. Here's the your host, Chris Show. Chris com. The Chris Voss Show. Com. Welcome to the big show, my family and friends. We certainly appreciate you guys being here for 15, for 15 years. It's been so long, I can't even say it right. For 15 years, uh, two, three to four shows now a day, uh, 15 to 20 shows a week. We are bringing you the Chris Voss Show. We might as well be radio at this point, and, uh, which probably fits because some people say I have that radio voice. Uh, people on Tinder say I have radio face, so there's that. <laughs> and a voice for print i think i stole that from a joke from a guy on the internet so uh don't uh, credit me that uh he he always says uh, i have a i have a voice for radio and a or no i have a face for radio and a voice for print i'll get the jokes here right one of these days we had an amazing gentleman on the uh, show he's authored six different books uh we're gonna be talking about aliens a little bit today so this should be pretty interesting and uh talking about uh, all that sort of stuff i think it might be a novel though so we're going to find out uh, what's what that's about. So if you think it's going to be like one of those alien shows, it might be and it might not be. But guess what? You're going to have to listen to find out. See what I did there. I teased it. In the meantime, refer the show to your family, friends, and relatives. Go to Goodreads.com, Fortress Chris Foss, LinkedIn.com, Fortress Chris Foss, YouTube.com, Fortress Chris Foss, and uh, Chris Foss one at the tickety talkity on the thingy dealy there. Uh, so uh, Gene P. Abel joins us on the show today uh, for his book, the Aliens Step In, Defenders of Time, that just came out paperback July 18th, 2023. We're going to be talking about his series that he does and uh, what's going to be in it and all that good stuff. Um, he is a U.S. Army colonel, retired, and is the best-selling author of six books in many genres, including sci-fi, fantasy, romance, political nonfiction. He is a Bachelor of Science in Finance from Penn State University and a Master's in Business Administration from Lehigh University. He's a distinguished military graduate from Penn State. He spent five years on active duty as a regular Army officer and 25 years as an Army Reserve officer. He completed the Army War College in 1985 and awarded the Meritus Service Medal twice. He was nominated for general officer and retired in 1993 as a colonel. After his military career, he's worked successfully in the business and education sectors before becoming an author. Welcome to the show, Gene. How are you? Very good. You too. There you go. Well, it's wonderful to have you. Uh, welcome to the show. Give us a dot .com so people can find you on the interwebs. Uh, my uh, my uh, website is Gene P. Abel Books. That's plural, dot .com genepablebooks.com you can check me out there you go so uh you've written six books is that correct yes okay and uh so uh what is this latest book about well the latest book is um it's a, a fiction um uh of actual contact with extraterrestrials ah. um the the series it's the third book in the series the first two are more time travel oriented the third begins as a time travel novel but it morphs into direct alien contact as a result of some of the things that we did uh, when we were filling around with time travel ah it's always that time travel that gets you every time now this is uh i believe the third in a series yes okay and then what was the first two books, if you want to plug them, so people know the titles for those? The first one is Going Back. Mm. That's where we go back in time and see uh, what's going on and try to prevent some people from making some changes in history. Ah. The kind second of some, book, so, kind of, I'm sorry to interrupt you. There's, just, so, there's kind of some uh, bad things that can happen if you try and go back in history and put your finger on the scale maybe, huh? Well, the feeling in my book is that we, you know, maybe the devil we don't know could be worse than the devil we do. Ah, see, there we go. So uh, that was the, the setting for the first book. Mm -hmm. Now, in the second book, we, we look at um, something we did in our lifetime had an adverse impact on Russia in mm. the future. 
Mm. And so people from the future come back to our time, kidnap one of our key scientists to try again to alter what we did that had an adverse impact on them. Wow. So that's the scenario of the second book. Mm. The third book picks up with, um, this time I pick on the Chinese, um, they successfully alter history. And as wow. a result, part of our time travel operation that isn't protected starts disappearing. Oh, wow. We go back in time to try to, again, reverse what the Chinese did. And in so doing, create a cataclysmic reaction in the universe. And this is what triggers the aliens to step in. Oh, they're like, what are you guys mucking about or something, maybe? Yep. That's exactly right. They're like, they're like we're, you know, we, we're watching what you idiots been doing, and you guys are a really bad ant farm. So there you go. Uh, tell us about some of the characters in the book. Well, there's that. that's one of the things. I tried to develop the characters over the three books. Mm -hmm. um, one of the most interesting characters, believe it or not, is one that is brought from the past in the first series, Claire. Mm -hmm. and she's a reporter. And as it, it worked out, she becomes very crucial in all of the uh, ensuing uh, episodes. Um, we have uh, Hessman, who is like, um, oh, he's a CIA agent. And he's really the brains behind the uh, time travel group. Uh, very influential. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got uh, a, a general that uh, um, uh, is in control of the uh, facility. Mm -hmm. One of the most fascinating uh, uh, characters is, is, is a guy by the name of Mr. Thomas, who appears uh, in the third book. And at first he looks like a sort of like an accountant. Mm -hmm. He turns out to be a direct representative from the president of the United States because he was sent to see what's going on. Oh, wow. So it, it's, it's interesting. And, and as these, as these characters mature through the book, uh, people get attached to them. For example, uh, I had thought about doing away with Claire, um, the reporter, in one of my in the third book, and my wife said, "Don't you dare! I love her." She's like, <laughs> <laughs> so you know, you always listen to the boss, right? Yeah, or the audience. I mean, it's, or the, it's, and it's that's funny exactly. how many authors we have on that write novels like yourself, and the audience will write them and talk about their characters, and they're just mm -hmm. like, "I never really thought of it that way." Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I've been I've been very pleased. Some of the uh, some of the comments that I've got on Goodreads and and, uh, and on uh, um, Amazon, people have been very complimentary. I'm very pleased at that. And you're right; some of them do cite the characters they follow. It's a little like uh, Dallas, if you remember. You know, <laughs> some, some people like some, yeah. and some people didn't like others, and that's 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 sort of exactly what what the comments have been. Hey, but it beats no one caring. So there you go. That's Absolutely. awesome. That's awesome. So uh, now this is the third in the installment, and I believe it's billed as the final? Yes, for now. That, this is the final installment uh, in this series. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what, you know what the future holds. None of us do. But I wanted to, I wanted to put this, this together. I mean, I, I had this idea from the beginning. Now, can I run up here with, with, right there with one second? I thought you were writing about time travel. If anybody knows of the future, it should be you, right? Well, I wish I did. <laughs> I th Sorry, I had I, to get I, that I joke a, in there. I think I had to step forward and get that get that the lottery number. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Sorry, I had to get that joke in there. That's okay. <laughs> go ahead, though. So you know we've we've got these three uh, sci-fi books, mm -hmm. but in reality, this third book, especially with the aliens, is really uh, linked to a non-fiction book that I wrote called "What If Anything Is Out There." Mm. Now, I spent uh, the better part of a year researching extraterrestrials, UFO sightings, and as a result, I wrote this nonfiction book, What If Anything Is Out There? Mm -hmm. So in reality, the, the fiction book, The Aliens Step In, is a, a realization of what might happen uh, that I have covered in my nonfiction book about UFOs. Oh, wow. And that came out on June 1st of 2021. Yes. Uh, and uh, was a best-selling book on the thing. Yes, um, it was. So you, 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 you kind of dabble in uh, studying uh, UFOs in, in real life. That's correct. 
there you go. We covered the whole gamut. See that setup I did at the beginning of the show? You didn't know whether we were going one way or the other, and we've gone both. So um, so some of the uh, – have you always been fascinated by UFOs? Yes. To be honest with you, um, you know, you, you, you – and, and sci-fi. Like, you you look at the, um, the, the, uh, the uh, um, sci-fi series and some of the um, uh, episodes – that clearly show or believe that there are extraterrestrial life out there. Mm. And of course I was a science major when I started out, believe it or not, my first year of college, I was a physics major. Mm. Um, however, I found out I wasn't as smart as I thought. So I changed to business. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but anyhow, um, the, the, the reality is that I have watched, and follow very closely what is going on. I have, I'm, you know, I'm signed up with NASA and, and I have um, a, 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 a National Science Foundation uh, websites and others. And I get a lot of information on a regular basis that I read. Oh, really? And it is, it is astounding, for example, the number of sightings that are currently occurring all over the world. Yeah. Uh, we have the interaction now of the federal government and setting up another, a new agency to review and take a look at UFOs. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, and then, you know, we have everything that we're learning from the, from the vehicles that we've sent to Mars and to the moon. And the pictures, for example, from the Webb and uh, Hubble telescopes really show me at least the enormity of what we're dealing with out there. And to think that we are the only speck on, <laughs> on a, in the universe. You know, if you took all the sand in the world and piled it up, mm -hmm. the earth is less than one grain of sand to that pile in the universe. Wow. That's just astounding to think about. Yes, it is. And so, you know, to believe that we're really the only one there, I, I just, I don't, I just don't, don't think so. There when I started my book, I was a skeptic. Mm -hmm. I will tell you that I was. But after a year of taking a look at what's out there, um, I I really do believe that yes, we have been and are being visited by extraterrestrials. There you go. So you know, you wrote your book in 2021. Uh, since then, there's been more congressional hearings. Uh, what is your take on some of the newer stuff that maybe uh, isn't in your book on what the it, what the congressional hearings are doing and and what I have a good question for you as a follow up why why do you think we've hid for all these years I mean for for all, as long as I've been alive I've been I've known that there's been a the files the classified files that are handed to a president when he takes presidency mm -hmm. they're like need to know files that he's handed a pile of needed notes and it probably has like, you know, nuclear issues and, and, you know, things that we, you know, it's probably deep, deep classified stuff. Um, it's either that or else it's at Mar-a-Lago, one of the two. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a bad joke. Um, the, uh, uh, in some bathroom, uh, the, uh, uh, why do you think they've, uh, the government has kept this hidden for so long, uh, all these years and now they're just finally getting around to talking about it. So two well, questions there. I think the government officials are a little concerned as to what the reaction will be uh -huh. when there's actual physical contact. There was a study done in 2000 by the by the uh, uh, one of the think tanks the government had uh, uh, contracted, and they took a look at what might happen. And really, it depends on the nature, I think, of the first contact. If, for example, they have come down and they're watching us like we would watch an ant hive mm. or a beehive, um, we just better hope they don't want to exterminate the beehive. <laughs> I think um, we got an AI trying to do that next. I think that's it's either them or the AI that's going to exterminate right. us. Yeah. Now, the, the other possibility Good is on. they may have reasoned at this point that we have matured enough that they want to have some dialogue some kind yeah. of contact with us. Now, if that's the approach, then I think there's a great deal to be uh, seen out there from a benefit standpoint. If they've been really coming to this planet for eons, which I believe they have, mm -hmm. we could learn about our history things in a way that we could not learn any other way. 
if they would share some of their technology with us, we could do some things like cure cancer or, or whatever have you. That would be ideal. Yeah. Now, the third possibility is if they look at us as being in the way. Uh-oh. Like the War of the Worlds. Mm -hmm. In that event, we're in trouble. Definitely. Because, because the technology and level of sophistication they must have to be able to come here is far beyond what we understand. Yeah. That would make it very difficult to deal with. Tom Cruise so, is going to save us for this one. I think it's going to be a little tough, yes. Yeah. And I think the government's concerned. However, with the number of sightings, especially over populated areas, and one other statistic that I found very interesting, do you know that the vast majority of sightings that have been reported all over the earth have been reported over nuclear facilities, uh -huh. either nuclear weapons or nuclear power generations? That just does not seem like a, a, a chance a, a piece of information. So, you know, if if we um, if 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 they were to come down in in a in a hostile fashion, mm -hmm. um, I think that's one of the things and one of the reasons that the government has been reluctant. Um, but I think today, with the increased sightings, and with some of the information that they have gotten from the pilots and others. They're trying to prepare the public for that eventuality. That's 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 how I really believe. You know, people like Jimmy Carter, when he ran for president, he mm -hmm. by the way, he claims he saw a UFO when he was a governor. That's right. And he filed an official report. When he ran for president, he was asked about this, and he pledged to release all the classified information if he were elected about UFOs. Mm-hmm. After he was elected, of course, the reporters remember, and they go back and they say, hey, Jimmy, what's going on here? <laughs> hey, Jimmy, what's up with that? His answer was, um, there are some things that are just too sensitive to release. Wow. Now, when you got somebody at that level saying those kinds of things, you know, it's hard to dismiss. Yeah. Do you do you think, I? you know, there's, well, there's one theory I've heard kicked around as to why the you know the, the, there was the Roswell thing in the fifties uh, and and other things. One of the reasons they didn't talk about it was because back then we were really a highly religious nation, and having aliens sh would show up would really blow up a lot of people's belief systems of uh, believing in different things. You know, we've we've created what there are over three thousand gods and and uh, demagogues over uh, over the history of man, maybe more. Um, you know, all these stories have been retold millions of times with different characters, if you study it. Um, it would, you know, if aliens showed up and were like, hell, we helped create you and you're our little ant, ant farm fishbowl. Um, you know, we've just been poking at you to see what you do. Uh, it, it, would, it would kind of upset some people and maybe be a real mm -hmm. shock to the system and of course it's, it's a little hard to run politics if you use religion as a as a and as a way to achieve some sort of you know people's religious or moral goals um you know as, as some people do especially on the right uh, then it's a little hard to sell that narrative if that narrative doesn't exist because aliens are real maybe so i don't know what do you think about that theory well certainly i, I think that has some validity Mm. Uh, but I think if you look deeper into it, they have to ask the question, well, okay, um, the, the creator may also created the aliens. Yeah. And maybe this is the way in which the creator decided to have human beings develop. Maybe he wants us to do battle with each other. Well, maybe <laughs> he wants us to learn from each other. Oh, uh -huh. there you go. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not smart. That's above my pay grade. But, but, yes. but, but, but quite frankly, you know, I, I really do believe that, um, you know, one of the things I learned in, in the research that I did, I, as I said, I spent about a year researching this. Mm -hmm. There are some very important people that have sworn that, that this is this is they have seen these things. For example, I have four astronauts in my book. I've got the Apollo uh, astronauts. I got Cooper, Mitchell, and Slayton, and every one of them mm -hmm. have said at one time or another that during their tour and 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 in uh, uh, NASA they have seen extraterrestrials. Wow! Now these are trained observers. These are not just the average person. Yeah, they're not some crackpot in a trailer right, home. Right. 
Now, believe me, there are there are examples of crackpots. For example, I don't know if you remember, there was an incident, uh, I think it was in the about 92, where they supposedly found an alien image on a cathedral that was being uh, rehabbed in Spain. Mm. And it really did look like one of our astronauts. Well, it turned out that one of the guys working on the rehab put the alien on the building. <laughs> All right. So there are there are absolutely stories out there that are bogus. Yeah. And, that, and that's one of the things I point out in my book. And you what know, do you what do you think about uh what do you think about, you know, have you seen those alien uh, they they drew basically what looks like an alien in the dirt, and the only way to see it is from the air or space. You know those places in South Africa mm -hmm. or South America. There's like two places that distinctly look kind of like an alien space dude. Um, what do you think about those things? Those those yeah. are kind of creepy. That, they are, and yeah. and and when I started, what I started with in my book is I went back twenty thousand years. Mm -hmm. And I took a look at some of the drawings and caves and yeah. all uh, cliffs and walls. And I thought to myself, well, I don't think these people were trying to scam anybody 20,000 years ago. Our ancestors probably drew what they saw. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing that has, has really an interest in me and is it included in my book is how all of these buildings, this pyramids, the Sphinx, uh, there's there's uh, there's a uh, uh, there's a stone um, that is uh, weighs it's it's in Lebanon. This stone weighs one thousand six hundred and fifty tons. That's three point three million pounds. It is perfectly hewn. It has perfect right angles. And the question is, how could anyone thousands of years ago? move something like that and how would it have been carved yeah i mean it 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 begs the question did they have help is that the balbec stones yes that's correct that is the balbec stones there we go and and you also have the 24 sarcophagi that they found recently in egypt that mm -hmm. weigh approximately 100 tons each yeah and they put a square on them and they are perfectly 90 degrees. Wow. I mean, we would have a hard time with our technology today to duplicate some of those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's huge. I'm looking at it right now on the, on the inner images and, uh, that, that is, that is completely wild. Um, I don't care how many slaves you have. You're not going to pick up 3.3 .3 million pounds. That's true. Huh? Um, and, and there's kind of a, we've had scientists on and humans were kind of dumb animals for our, well, they haven't changed much if you've seen politics. Um, <laughs> they, yeah, humans haven't changed much uh, uh, in, uh, hadn't changed much for a long time after they were, they started walking or trying to walk upright. And then there was a, there was a time where something clicked in our history and this mm -hmm. is this is from scientists and, and people we've had on the show of reputable universities uh we don't have the people on from the trailer parks just me um and uh uh and there's something that clicks and we awaken and we suddenly have consciousness that we have now where we can sit around and look at our belly buttons and go why are we here and blah 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 and wonder about stuff like that um before that we were just like most animals wandering around just doing stuff and just being like, I don't do the thing. And uh, big stone, you know, that sort of thing. Somehow we clicked into consciousness. And there's something that happened. And they don't know whether it's uh, evolution. Some people have suggested that, you know, the aliens came down and said, hey, look at these dumbass animals. And let this, you know, touch them with the whatever thingy. And bing, consciousness. I don't know. What do you think about that? Well, when you, when you take a look at what we're doing today with DNA, yeah, we are able now to we would be able to create people with blue eyes if we want them. We'd be able to alter the sex with the mm -hmm. DNA. So if we at the level we are at are able to do that, if you assume that aliens are significantly more sophisticated, you're absolutely correct. They could have very well done that. Mm 
And that could have been the spark that changed us from being uh, dragging our knuckles on the ground uh, to putting uh, uh, satellites in, in, in orbit. Wow. And somehow these stones got built, and they say, you know, there's rumors, I mean, there's rumors, I don't know, there's there's theories that, you know, a lot of the temples that were built were built to the aliens and some sort of alien sort of, uh, I don't know, technology or communication device or, you know, I don't know, they were, they were cell towers for aliens or something, I don't know. But well, there's theories about it. There is a, there is a, a pyramid in, um, uh, it's in central um, Mexico. Mm -hmm. um it's a uh, theo theo cam i believe it's called mm -hmm. uh, it has they found in the in the guts of this thing a pool of liquid mercury and they also found um mica now what is really strange is mercury does exist in liquid form in rocks to some degree but the quantity that they found in this in this pyramid Mm -hmm. and with the mica, there's some theories that it might have been an electrical generation uh, 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 facility. Oh, wow. Um, you know that we have, there are pyramids in every occupied continent except, for, you know, we don't know because we haven't thought it out yet, Antarctica. Mm. And they're almost all oriented the same. Yeah, that's true, huh? Now, one of, the th one of the things that I did find when I was looking at how could these things have been built there are three theories that I've come up with or that I've discovered um, about how they could possibly move such heavy stones. One is that they would infuse the stone with helium-3 and reduce its weight by 90%. Now, that's all well and good, except that I'm not sure how you infuse a stone with helium. Yeah. At least not, not, not with the technology we have. Okay? Yeah. That's one, that's one theory. Another theory is that by using harmonics and sound, that you can cause things to levitate. Hmm, that's what we do on Fridays around here. Uh, well, that's uh, that's a that's a that's a good thing to do. Yeah. The third is that giants <laughs> move these stones. Now, the interesting oh. thing is, recently they discovered in a place called Caria in southwest Turkey. Mm -hmm. A bunch of skeletons, when I say a bunch, I'm talking thousands, mm -hmm. at least the report I read, of humanoids that were 35 feet tall. Oh, really? 35, I think of that. However, even a humanoid 35 feet isn't going to pick up 3 million pounds. That's true. And even if you then would accept any of those as to how did the stones get moved that we're talking about, how did they get cut? Yeah, that's true. That's the cut is amazing. That, that's just, I don't know. I'm, like I said, I think we would be hard-pressed today to duplicate that. Maybe maybe they're, you know, the, I mean, the, the two, I think it's the one or two uh, South American giant uh, spacemen that you, you can't really tell who they are unless you see them from actual space. Yes. Um, which really blows my mind um, is... Um, Maybe they were giants. Maybe they were big guys that were they super lifters and they could just go, and, you know, move. Where do you guys want these Lego pieces? And, you know, put them over there, stuff like that. Maybe that was the thing. It, it's very possible. I mean, one of the things that I that I have concluded from, from the research that I've done on this and other things is the more we learn, the more we realize how little we know to begin with. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the most interesting thing. I, I always say release all the files, um, but like I said, it, it you lose some political uh, uh, value there because politics is inherently, especially with what's going on right now in our country, religions oh, technically, I guess, always been a part of politics. I mean, in the fifties, they added "In God We Trust" to our coins. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, it, it we're, we seem to be in this battle lately, especially with what's been going on with uh, religious extremism. Um, and you know, I mean, it's, it's, you know, there's battles like that around the world. We're seeing Israel and, and the, yeah. and the Palestine going at it right now. Um, and you know, the battle of religions. Uh, and so, you know, it, it's so inherent in our thing. And I think that, uh, having aliens, you know, become a part of the narrative, it, 
it disables a lot of religious sort of text because you're like, I don't know. You could even you can even run a theory as to maybe there was a reason Jesus walked on water. Maybe he was an alien. I don't know. Maybe I'm an alien. Maybe you're an alien. Maybe we're all aliens. I don't know. Well, maybe it doesn't mean by it depends on your definition of an alien, I guess. <laughs> there you go. There you go. And what do we know what the definition of an alien is, right? Because because mm -hmm. uh, you know. I, we're still discovering the universe, but yeah, these are all interesting things and you weave them not only into the book that you wrote, uh, in 2021 and you discuss it and what the U S reporting was and, uh, 143 sightings since 2004. Um, and, uh, you know, there, there's a point where when I first used to hear about these, when I was young in the seventies and I read all these books about alien stuff and you'd read about stuff and you'd be like, uh, I don't know, that guy just probably smoked some wacky. Mm -hmm. Taffy weed and uh, had a few threw back too many beers and the anal probing is a little much all the time. I don't know what that's about. Like, why does it always have to be the anal probing? And you're you're like, surely they've got something better to do than do colonoscopies on us. Yep. Um, but I don't know. There's there's the the cow things where they you know these cows will be found that have parts missing and the way they're taken apart is kind of weird. Uh, I don't know if you have any theories on that, uh, but yeah, it's, it, you know, the, there's a limit to our knowledge of what we know. I mean, that seems to be the case on a lot of different things, really, when it comes down to it. Well, it's interesting because I'm, I have just submitted, uh, we're going to have a second edition to the, the UFO book. Oh, are you? There you and go. We have added a wealth of material, um, to, to the next book. Mm -hmm. um, um, the the title I believe is going to be "Are They Out There?" Ah. And uh, you mentioned, for example, the uh, the the cattle mutilation. Mm -hmm. That's been all over the world, and it has it started. The first one they knew of it was back in eighteen hundred something. Wow! But the interesting thing is about it is there's no question that these animals have been mutilated, but there's a few other things that, that are very interesting. Number one. The surgical technique is yeah. simply, they don't understand it. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, um, they have found that a lot of the, especially the cows that have been mutilated, they're the most most often found uh, animal. The legs have been shattered as if they were dropped. Okay. Uh -huh. And the third thing is that these carcasses, would normally be eaten by by crows and and and, and other uh, other animals. They won't touch them. Wow. So that's one of the things we've in, we, we've in, we've looked at. We looked at the the um, the uh, the alien abduction issue. Mm -hmm. And there have been a lot of studies that, including a couple at Harvard, where they've interviewed these people. They put them under deep hypnosis, mm -hmm. um, and there's no doubt that these people believe they were abducted. Okay. Wow. And of course, then you have the things like you were talking about the images. Uh, you have the crop circles. Yeah, the crop circles. Are crop circles are all over. And some of them appear to have coding in them, like mathematical coding. Mm -hmm. And some people believe that they're an attempt, the, the legitimate ones. And here again, there are some that are not legitimate, I understand. Yeah. Legitimate ones may very well be an attempt to communicate using mathematics that are embedded in these crop circles. Mm. I, I have one that one of the studies that I found that I have in the new book goes into how the, the actual stalks are being bent and they're not being bent, at least not in some of the, the crop circles physically, mm. they're not just being bent over like with a board. Mm. They are actually found that a, a side of the, of the stalk, has been blown out and they believe the way that it happens is that there was some sort of uh, like a microwave um, uh, focused on the stalks that heated up the moisture in the stalks and blew out a side of the stalk. Hmm. So, you know, if that really is how some of the crop circles were created, here again, we're talking about not only a sophistication that we don't have, but you could only do that from above. Yeah, maybe they're maybe they're trying to talk to us, but you know they don't know our language. We don't know our, theirs. And 
Well, they're and, and since they're, they're superior, they're probably trying to figure a way to talk to somebody that's a little, you know, like like we talk to a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are we the dog? I'm afraid in this case we might be. <laughs> Damn it. Well, if you figure they're crossing light years of time and space and travel, they're they're probably a little bit more advanced than us. Plus, I mean, if you've seen us lately, we're not that advanced. Uh, so there you go. Uh, get on social media a given day, and you'll see how far we've really come. Yes, what is it? Sure. What is that old line from George Carlin? Uh, think how dumb the average person is, and realize fifty percent of the population is dumber than them. Yeah. So, and there's some people that are making a uh, Olympic sport of it to see how far they can go down the Dunning Kruger wormhole. <laughs> but that's yeah. why we have the show, ladies and gentlemen, is to make you guys smarter. People who listen to the show. And uh, make you guys more educated. Even if, you know, some things are theories, you can uh, have more to decide what you know. But, uh, you know, there's an, old, there's an old saying about life that I love. Uh, there's three things that are important in life. There's the things you know. There are the things you know you don't know. And that's, you know, you can work on that if you want to learn, uh, you know, physics or something or algebra. And there's things you don't know that you don't know. And those are, I think, the most intriguing things to wonder about in life because, you know, expanding your mind, expanding your universe, uh, even if you can't master something, at least you can be like, hey, I know about that thing, but I don't know about it, but it's kind of interesting. So uh, it's really cool. And I love how you weave this into not only books you're writing about real life into your novels and stuff. So this makes for great content on both sides of the aisle. Well, I believe that some science fiction is not fiction at all. Mm. It's just things that haven't happened. Ah, look at Jules. Go. Look at Jules Verne. Mm -hmm. We didn't know anything about nuclear submarines when that book was written. Yeah, and some of the stuff on Star Trek, your phasers, your, oh, your, yeah. your <laughs> communication the, toys. The, the, the gov our government's testing those things right now. Yeah, I saw an article where they've actually let a contract to see if it's possible to transmit things from point A to point B, like the mm -hmm. transporter. Mm -hmm. I mean, think of that. If if we could transport even inanimate objects, not not humans, not living things, mm -hmm. you could transport something from point A to point B in the midst of an eye, a flick of an eye. Yeah, just take what matter. It would, do, it would do to just the supply chain in this country and this world. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's how they moved the stones. They had, uh, you know, they had the, maybe, maybe they did. They said, "Beam me up, Scotty, eh? Yeah, and uh, beam that stone. Is that beam that stone up and put it back down." Yeah, there. could be. Put the coordinates in, maybe that GPS back then. Uh, it's definitely interesting. I mean, I uh, I remember what was seeing the uh, the spaceman from space to South Af America, and just getting eerie goosebumps. I'm like, okay, that's that's a little too much. Those guys didn't have airplanes, so they couldn't they couldn't see if what they were even doing was right when they drew it. Like, mm -hmm. there's no way to go. Hey, did we do that right? Unless you had space guys going, hey, that was pretty good, man. Yeah, good job, man. Yeah, you, you put a little, little more shading on this side. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you missed a little off the foot. Well, I, are you familiar with the elongated skulls in Peru? Uh, no. All right. There were some, I think, in, I think it was 1927 they were actually discovered. In any event, there are some elongated skulls that were found in Peru. And and, and the, 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 the the pictures are like you would see them, you know, our, our idea of the grays, you know, the gray aliens uh, today. Oh, wow. Uh, they've been experimenting with those uh, with those skulls for some time. Mm -hmm. And with the development of DNA and the techniques that we've used, they have finally been able to use the, they've been able to extract some DNA from the dentin in the teeth. You know, that's, that's one of the best places that you can get DNA because it's protected by the enamel in the teeth. Oh, wow. And they removed this DNA and they've been able to work with it. It took five years for them to, uh, to process this in the article that, that I have cited in my, my book. And the conclusion of the experts on the DNA from the teeth in these elongated skulls is that they are unlike anything they have ever seen on Earth. Oh, wow. There you go. Now, that's, uh, it, that's physical evidence. Yeah. It's definitely interesting, man. It's, no, it is. Uh, it's, it's fascinating. Wrong. At least it is to me. <laughs> I, I think it is. Yeah, that's I'm I'm looking at over the thing here. Uh, so these are all interesting stuff, man. Uh, give us uh, any final pitch out on your books and uh, the, the Alien Step In book as well as we go out. Well, the reason I write is I, I want to uh, sort of impart my ideas. Hopefully people will will look at them, maybe learn something, maybe be interested to look at things themselves. Mm hmm. 
um, because I think there is so much out there to learn. And one of the things that we are seeing today is the rate at which we're learning is, is a geometric progression. It's not lineal. It's getting mm -hmm. faster and faster. Yeah. I mean, when you take a look at things like AI, when you took, take a look at quantum computers that are on the horizon, uh, these things are going to just accelerate the ability for us to learn about things. And as I said, uh, I like to get people to think. Um, I like to entertain them. Oh, yeah, it's, it's an ego thing when you get, you know, when you get people um, uh, uh, saying uh, nice things about what you've written. Uh -huh. But I really do believe that, that um, we need more people looking at things and saying, is this possible? Or do we really know all of this? Or is this really the way it was? <clears throat> um, I mean, just think um, in, my, in my third sci-fi book, The Aliens Step In, Mm -hmm. At the end of the book, the aliens give us a gift. And the gift is the ability to go back to any point in time and see what happened. We can't change anything, but we can see what happened. Just mm -hmm. think if we had such a thing. Yeah, it would be <clears throat> be wild. And maybe that's how they travel through time, is they even have a time think machine. I don't know. Well, the time machine, the wormholes. And the other thing that I looked at is uh, parallel dimensions. Ah, there you go. I think Elon Musk has joked about that. That's right. Mm. Well, Einstein Einstein, and, and, uh, and uh, uh, had some theories about some of this stuff, too, uh, which lends credence. And I, as I say, I try to impart some science into what I'm writing, but I, I, I'm, I'm careful to not get it to a point where it goes over people's heads. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, for example... One of the things that I was trying to explain in, I, in my, new, uh, my new book about the UFOs is the enormity of the universe, which, I, which at the end of my book, I'm going to have 16 color pictures from Hubble and uh, Webb telescopes because I want to show the enormity of what's out there. And so, um, uh, I, you know, I, I think that in doing this, it will stimulate some people's interest. Uh, again, get them to think, um, read more, and uh, that's that's really what, what I'm about. Uh, I'm, I'm fascinated by some of this stuff, and I like to write it down and uh, have others look at it. There you go. The more you know. And uh, you can pick up his books. Uh, give us your .com on where people can find you on the interwebs, please. Okay. It's, again, GeneDAbleBooks.com. If you go onto my website, just click on the cover of any of my books. It will take you to the book. And every mm -hmm. one of my books has an audio book trailer. It's a little green button. You just click it. And it will give you a three-minute capsulized version of what the book's about. You can then buy the book from Amazon by clicking on the little red button. Uh, you can take a look at what other readers have said. Because, you know, I think it's important. You know, I can tell you that I wrote the book as the best things in sliced bread. But I'm the author. <laughs> But when I see the comments that people have have, have uh, uh, written, uh, from like I say, from Goodreads and, and from Amazon, I'm, I'm very pleased. But, you know, I include some of those on my website because that way if people are at all interested in one or more of my books, they can see what others have read, uh, have said that I've read the books. There you go. There you go. Uh, well, this should be really interesting. Uh, and uh, people should order up your book. Thank you very much, Gene, for coming up the time. Thank you for uh, having me on. Time. Thank you for coming. We've had a great discussion. From We went from aliens fiction to aliens reality and uh, all sorts of good stuff for the alien folks out there. Um, order the book, folks, wherever fine books are sold. July 18, 2023 came out. The Aliens Step In. Defenders of Time, and check out Gene's other books. Thanks, Your Honors, for tuning in. Go to goodreads.com, Fortress Chris Foss, LinkedIn.com, Fortress Chris Foss, YouTube.com, Fortress Chris Foss, and Chris Foss One on TikTok. Thanks for tuning in. Be good to each other. Stay safe, and we'll see you guys next time. There you go.